I'm not sure if there's any particular person who's uh, given this to me. I think it's just something that's been repeated over and over and over again. Is you know, um, is is the difference between the writers who succeed and the ones who don't is persistence and continuing to work on it and grit. Like it's it's it is painful. It does take time. Um, and but as long as you sort of keep working your craft, keep honing it, keep developing it, and keep trying to submit and work on it, you will, you know, you will find a way to uh, break through. I believe, um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's that. I think persistence. I think is often what separates mm-hmm. right to manage to finish a novel, um, and then you know get it published in whatever form, versus those who always dream of someday writing a novel and don't succeed. Mm-hmm. Good writing is ultimately good rewriting and editing. I think you just need to, um, the first draft is something that probably no one should see. And it's not until you've done many, many, many drafts later on that you actually sort of develop this, um, something that's compelling, but also hopefully thought provoking. Uh, and that I think is something you can, uh, something really helps to get feedback on. Oftentimes what can be helpful is when you're done with a draft or done with a major section is that you have, you should leave your work for a while, right? You shouldn't look at it or try to edit it right away. And mm-hmm. oftentimes those downtimes, you can try to engage in other forms of writing or some the other project. Uh, you could also, I mean, you know, take, take short breaks. I think if you are uh, involved and, you know, do a short story about that subject, if you don't necessarily want to write, a whole novel, um, and those I think are always uh, are always good idea because I do think that people, uh, when they when they have a moment to take go away from the project and come back to it, that often gives them a bit of distance to see uh, see things that they didn't couldn't have seen if they'd stayed there the whole time. Uh, so I mean I do recommend, uh, you know I think that's how you sort of manage it is like you sort of put take that creative energy to do something new. The work is, you know, is how you'd research many things. It's, um, I mean, I would look for uh, characters or people who maybe I wanted to sort of bring in to the story, like a certain kind of person, right? Um, and then one would sort of look at primary uh, sources in terms of, I mean, if you could talk to people like that to understand what their perspectives were. Um, oftentimes there'd be amalgams of different kinds of people, right? But if there were phrases or expressions or ideas that were interesting, those would find their way into uh, the, the, I would note down and sort of potentially bring in, but also sort of broader literature on how do how does this sort of thing affect people and their upbringing, you know, things from, um, I mean, I mean, things in terms of obviously, uh, you know, if uh, how, what what take makes people take on extreme extreme ideologies, what sort of things, what how does mm-hmm. Alzheimer's affect families more broadly? I mean, you know, one can have uh, one experience of one's own, but the question is, is you reach into sort of broader work of literature and broader personal statements that people have to sort of draw from a wider pool, right? Um, and that's and that's a, a lot of it. So a lot of it is sort of just researching and seeing many different, uh, many different views, trying to, and then as you're writing it, sort of internalizing it to try and come up with a, a voice for those characters or at least a thought process, right? And then once you've got that, it's a bit like acting or method acting, something where you're just sort of like, how would you, how would this character react to this event? Um, you know, how, what, what, what would their thought process be to it? And honestly, after all of that, all of that that I've given you, this elaborate sort of process, it really comes down to cutting and rewriting and just me doing it until it feels true. I talked to Elif Shafak um, about, you know, whether she had any advice for me, given that she had experienced um, uh, some issues with some of her work. And, you know, she said, uh, and as I mentioned to you earlier, a lot of people sort of try to find real life characters in the fictional form. Um, and there's always that issue of how are people who you know can respond to what you write. Uh, and she said, you know, you've got to write as if no one, uh, with, without a sort of worrying about the consequences of the response, um, or as everyone you know is sort of dead because you can't write worrying about how 
your your mother will view this or your you know father or your uncle or your cousin will view any of this um and i think that was very freeing and liberating and encouraging i wouldn't worry too much about borrowing from uh borrowing things from uh, writers again too influenced by a writing style um i think uh, it's you know it, it, i mean don't don't just plagiarize obviously but don't mm -hmm. worry too much about that just try to write it in in a simple way in the way you would tell it a story to a friend um and that was yeah uh, and you know tell say it that way relay the story to them that way and then mm -hmm. edit it the clarity and making it very sort of tight but that's i think how you'll find find something that's close to your voice